All right, thank you all for being here this evening. Today is Monday, March 2nd, 2022. The time is 6 p.m. We're gonna go ahead and call the meeting to order with a roll call. Council Member Mendoza. Here. Council Member Neal. Here. Council Member Hughes. Here. Council Member Rodriguez. Here. Council Member Anderson. Here. Vice Mayor Cortez. Here. Mayor Walter, here. At this time, we will begin with a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. Now we'll go ahead to our first call to the public. Call to the public is for public comment on issues within the jurisdiction of the town council. Council rules limit public comment to three minutes. Individual council members may respond to criticism made by those commenting, may ask staff to, put, um, to review a matter raised, or may ask that a matter be put on a future agenda. However, members of the council shall not discuss or take action on any matter during an open call to the public unless those matters are properly noted for discussion or legal action. At this time, is there anybody who would like to speak this evening at call to the public? Okay, seeing no such movement in person or online, I'm closing our first call to the public, but there will be a second call to the public this evening. Moving on into item six, Public hearings and presentation. 6A is our public hearing to receive public comments on proposed increase to sanitation rates and for discussion, approval, disapproval of authorizing an increase in sanitation rates and fees using the 2021 rate of 1908, as in the Circonomy rate study, and increase the commercial fees at 10% above the contractor's cost effective June 1st, 2022. Ms. Rebecca Jimenez. Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Town Council, earlier this year we came before you asking if we could go ahead and advertise a uh, an, uh, possibility to increase the rate. And that is because our uh, provider for services had increased 5%, which is 90%, 90 cents more than what we're paying now. What we're, uh, we did not have a rate increase last year. It was waived by the town manager. So we're requesting to implement a, a dollar additional per month to the rate. And this would cover the cost of the increase that we have. The enterprise funds are self-sufficient. They have to cover their own expenditures and uh, depreciation capital outlay, et cetera. Uh, our sanitation fund is just in balance. Whatever's coming in is going out in expenditure right now. So that is why we're coming before council tonight to request a rate increase. And if it's granted that we will implement it on June the 1st. We have given notification via the website. It has been posted more than 60 days and also uh, through the mail to the people that are paying on the rates. A flyer was sent out for their notification also. Thank you so much. At this time, I'm going to go ahead and open the public hearing for public comment. If anybody has anything regarding this item that they would like to speak on. Council? Sure. Sure. Okay. Any others? Vice Mayor? Becky, when did we go to the $18? Was that uh, two that, years ago then? Yes. Uh -huh. And uh, as I said, with the prior year, last year, we did not uh, increase our rates. The town manager at that time, we were in full COVID mode. So we didn't, uh, we waived the rate at that time. 
They can't hear you behind you. I'm so sorry. Uh, that's all right. And um, we were notified in January of this year that we were going to have a 5% increase so it hit fairly fast so rates increased as of february the first <clears throat> so we've been uh we had to go to notification because it's, it's required by state statutes to notify 60 days in advance have a public hearing and then have the council approve or disapprove these rates thank you for that clarification mm -hmm. seeing no such movement regarding comments I'm going to go ahead and close the public hearing. And at this time, that concludes that public hearing and presentation. And we need a motion at this time. I make a motion we approve uh, the rates that are presented in agenda item 6A. Six, six Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mayor and Vice Mayor and Town Council. Thank you. The second item is a proclamation declaring May 2022 as Building Safety Month. So Keith, would you come on over here and join us for our Building Safety Month proclamation? Absolutely, but first I want you to invite them up and then I want you to give a background of what building safety is in the town of Florence and we'll share the proclamation. Okay, all right. Well, thank you so much, Mayor and, and Council. So I have, uh, with you know, as far as um, the Building Safety Month, uh, this is an annual deal by ICC, uh, or ICC codes, and uh, we recognize this as, as Safe Building Month. I have staff members here tonight, so if you guys will come up, join us. So Mark White's our building official. Maricela Benitez, sir planner, come up, Maricela. And I'm not sure if anybody else is here right now. So anyway, this is these are two of the team that, that helps make it work in our office, so. Well, we certainly appreciate all of the hard work that is coming out of your office. It is Building Safety Month, so we want to share this proclamation with you moving forward. So Building Safety Month, whereas the town is committed to recognizing that our growth and strength depends on the safety and essential role our homes, buildings, and infrastructure play, both in everyday life and when disaster strikes. And? I remember this from last year. I made this shorter this year. <clears throat> Whereas our confidence and resilience of these buildings that make up our communities is achieved through the devotion of vigilant guardians, building safety and fire prevention officials, architects, engineers, builders, tradespeople, design professionals, laborers, plumbers, and other construction industry who work year round to ensure the safe and construction of buildings and whereas. <laughs> oh, oh, that was perfect. Whereas these modern building codes include safeguards to protect the public and from hazards such as hurricanes, snowstorms, tornadoes, wildland fires, floods, and earthquakes, and whereas. Whereas each year in observance of Building Safety Month, people all over the world are asked to consider the commitment to improve building safety, resilience, and economic investment at home and in the community, and to acknowledge the essential service provided to all of us by local and state building departments, fire prevention bureaus, and federal agencies in protecting lives and property. So therefore I, Tara Walter, Mayor of the Town of Florence, do hereby proclaim the month of May 2022 as Building Safety Month. Accordingly, I encourage our citizens to join with their communities in participation of Building Safety Month activities. I'd like to share this with your team. Thank you. 
Next on our list, we have our Water Safety Month proclamation in the town of Florence. Allie, do you want to come on up? And if there's anybody you want to bring along, you bring them right on up. We have some new lifeguards joining us as well. Hi. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let Alicia Marufo introduce our lifeguards because she's worked hand in hand with them more often than I. So here's Alicia Marufo. Hello. Um, so I have Joseph Garcia. He is our new pool manager. And then I have Carol or Clarissa Ballard. Um, she is a new lifeguard. And then we have Luis Maldonado, who is also a new lifeguard. <laughs> okay. um, so our pool is going to be opening on May 28th. Um, we will be doing a grand opening with our resource fair um, and like acknowledging water safety. And then we do have quite a bit of programming that we will be offering in the month of June. Uh, we have swim lessons, we have lap swim. Uh, you do get free membership for the lap swim if you are a fitness center membership um, or a member. And then we also have, let's see what else. We have dive in movies that will be coming to the pool this summer. Um, there's gonna be hopefully a bunch of food vendors so you guys can come and enjoy some of the food as well. Uh, we have uh, family, I believe family packs. Um, we have annual passes. So if you're interested in making sure you make it there every day or during the weekends, uh, that can help cut down pricing for you. Um, we do still have rentals available for our multi-purpose room, but we have booked out for private parties. So if you could spread the word on that, that would be helpful. <laughs> so. Thank you. And everybody's really looking forward to the pool opening up, right? So here's our proclamation for National Water Safety Month 2022. Whereas the citizens of the town of Florence recognize the vital role that swimming and aquatic related activities relate to good physical and mental health and enhance the quality of life for all people. And whereas the citizens of the town of Florence understand the essential role that education regarding the topic of water safety plays in preventing drowning and recreational water related injuries and Whereas the town of Florence is aware of the contributions made by the recreational water industry as, a repre as represented by the Association of Pool and Spa Professionals, the National Recreation and Park Association, and the World Water Park Association in developing safe swimming facilities, aquatic programs, home pools and spas, and related activities providing healthy places and recreate, learn, and grow, build self-esteem, confidence, and self or in sense of self-worth, which contributes to the quality of life in our community and. Whereas the citizens of the town of Florence recognize the ongoing efforts and the compliments to educate the public on the pool and spa safety issues and the inactivities by the pool, spa, water park, recreation and park industries and whereas the citizens of the town of Florence understand the vital importance of communicating water safety rules and programs to families and individuals of all ages whether owners of private pools users of public swimming facilities or visitors to water parks and oh This final one you can't really read because this, <laughs> this is the one where I get to say that I, as mayor of the town of Florence, declare May 2022 National Water Month, and we're all celebrating that here in the town of Florence. Give them a round of applause. They did a fantastic job. Thank you, team, and I hope to see everybody at the pool.
guys. Good season. <coughs> Before I bring up this next um, proclamation and recognition, First, I just want to go ahead and read a little introductory that we have prepared this evening. The celebration of National Historic Preservation Month gives the town of Florence an opportunity to recognize the historic significance of our community, as well as those who have contributed their time and their expertise to improving the historic integrity of our town. Historic preservation provides an opportunity for all residents to be meaningfully engaged in preserving the history and the character of their town. A comprehensive historic preservation program requires the whole community to understand, support, and expect excellence in preserving the historic fabric in their community. This year, the recipient of the Historic Preservation Month proclamation is going to be Mr. Reggie McKay. He has worked as a skilled preservation specialist in our community and throughout the country for more than 25 years. In addition to overseeing major restoration projects in California, Nevada, and many historic cities and towns, Reggie has also dedicated much of his time to restoring and rehabilitating eight of the town's historic structures seven which are in productive use as of today. These buildings include the Silver King Carriage House, the Clark House, General Store, Chapel of the Gila, McFarland State Park, Carmen Machia Rental House, the Rapp Saloon, and most recently the Quinn Building. These buildings all required major structural work and finishing detail in order to be able to fully be inside of the structures. Half of them were deteriorated to the point of demolition, which is a testament to both Reggie's skill and his commitment to historic preservation and the town of Florence. All of these buildings are on the National Register of Historic Places and all are designed as contributors due to their architectural style and historical significance in the region. Finally, Reggie regularly maintains the adobe work on other buildings throughout the town, such as the American Legion, the George Brown residence, and the first Nicholas Beer Hall, with many of these structures helping to make our Main Street what it is today. In a moment, I'd like to invite our Historic District Advisory Commission up, Reggie, and I would like to invite our town council to come down because our council is very supportive of the historic preservation that has happened in our community. And without everybody working synergistically together, this progress would not have been possible. This is where I have my notes, and oh my goodness, it's not pulling up. Hang on, I'm having a little bit of a glitch. Chairman Betty Wheeler. If you are here, come forward. There you are. Vice Chair, Victoria Knight. I wanted to make sure that I had all of your titles and ready to go. Commissioner Lynn Smith. Commissioner Debbie Novotny. Commissioner Carol Michael. And Commissioner Janet Duttmeyer. And I knew that she was not able to be at the meeting tonight. Council, would you like to come down as well, please? I thought, I, you know what, Chris Reed? I thought I called your name. Chris Reed is amazing. She did a 
book author study this weekend. She's continually giving to the community with her knowledge. And please forgive me, Commissioner Chris Reed. Let's give everybody here, all of these commissioners, a round of applause and our chair and vice chair. Reggie, can you please join us? This is a great crowd to be around. Reggie, can you share some of your wisdom with us and talk to a little bit about historic preservation? Well, historic preservation takes this whole team and everybody that's standing up here today. I may do the hard part, the work of it, but these people have to actually follow the rules and the regulations, maybe help with financing, uh, homeowners, building owners. So it's a team effort. And I'm just glad you didn't give me that to read because if you do, I'm going to pass it along. So <laughs> get your glasses on. Well, and it, take, it takes a vision as well. And it takes everybody coming together. Would anybody like to say any words before we share the proclamation? Because everybody here gives a lot of their hard time, and they really are committed to the town of Lawrence. So. I just want to thank the council, um, all of you backing us. Without you behind us, we would really be struggling. So I want to thank all of you for your interest. And we've got a great town, and I'm, I feel like we're at a, a different point than we were maybe 10 years ago. And I think it's, uh, it makes me feel really good and proud. So, and with that note, a lot of people in this town stepped up, like the Kramers for the Clark House, Lynn Smith and her husband Tom for three buildings. Uh, so people that come into town, like we have a building now that somebody got for a $35,000 tax lien, and then when realized they have to put 300000 into it, it's kind of lost, so it needs a team to tr try to either help that person or they walk away and it goes to the next person. And that's happened in this town over and over and over again. So the more the public input can be, the council can be, HDAC can be to help in these people because a lot of them don't know what they're getting into. They think they got something good until they open that door and went, oh my God. Some of them just close it and walk away. So it is a team effort. We, we just can't laugh at them and go, oh, you fool. We have to say, hey, there's money. There's grants. Mm -hmm. There's people that can help you. But without this team, it won't happen and we'll lose more buildings. So we have, we have a lot of good buildings that need attention. So if everybody can just stand behind them, be positive, look yes. what we saved, and then with that guy over there, I don't think we're going to burn any more buildings down. <laughs> right? Because we keep losing them. If once we build them, we lose them to fire. So if we're not losing them to fire, we're just losing them to demolition by neglect. And we need to get out of that role. Habit. Habit. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Bonnie Barriola, would you like to join us up here as well? Bonnie Barriola has also significantly contributed um, to our historic preservation. She's brought on some ASU students and some interns in the past, as well as she um, helped us. My favorite project is the Silver King Plaza. So thank you for joining us. All right, so whereas the National Trust for the Historic Preservation established May as Historic Preservation Month in 1973 to promote historic places for the purpose of instilling national and community pride, promoting heritage tourism, and showing the social and economic benefits of the historic preservation, and whereas the Town of Florence recognizes May as Historic Preservation Month, and whereas Historic Preservation Month can install 
instill awareness of the local, historically significant buildings and landmarks to the residents of Florence and the surrounding area. And okay. Whereas Historic Preservation Month can promote the region's largest source of heritage tourism, Florence Downtown Historic District, located in the town of Florence, Arizona, and Whereas historic preservation can be a community discussion uniting residents behind an important cause and. Whereas historic preservation has been shown nationally to create jobs, stabilize property values, and preserve existing historic buildings. Now therefore, be it resolved that the town of Florence, Arizona does recognize May 2022 as National Historic Preservation Month and hereby proclaim May 2022 as Historic Preservation Month and call upon the residents of the town of Florence to recognize and participate in this special observance. Thank you for being here. Yeah, he had it. All right, thank you so much. Our next item is item E, presentation of the April 2022 
Outstanding Employee Recognition Program Award. We are here to recognize Ernesto Lopez for his outstanding contributions to, <coughs> to the town of Florence. So just a little bit of background, and here's Ernesto. Hi, Ernesto. Hello. So town administration, in conjunction with the Employee Incentives Committee, developed the Outstanding Employee Recognition Program to give our employees the ability to recognize their coworkers for their outstanding contributions they've made to the organizations and the citizens we serve. So, Ernesto has been selected as the employee of the month. He will be receiving a $75 gift certificate to the business in the town of Florence of his choice. I'd like to share what his coworkers have said about Ernesto's contribution to the work environment. I would like to nominate Ernesto Lopez for the Outstanding Employee Award. Ernesto has been with the town for approximately four years in Public Works Fleet Division as a mechanic. He comes to work each day with a positive attitude, ready and willing to do what it takes to get the day's tasks accomplished. He takes pride in his work, is very meticulous and detailed oriented, as he knows that he has the safety of fellow employees at his hands. When anyone brings in their vehicle for service or repair, they can rest assured that it will be done efficiently and correctly. Ernesto works hard and is willing to learn new procedures and skills to improve the internal services of the fleet division. When he is not working on vehicles, he pitches in around the shop and he makes sure that everything is clean and put away where things belong. Ernesto is polite and respectful to his coworkers and employees of other departments. He always has a can-do attitude and he helps make the fleet division the best that it can be. Ernesto, would you like to share a few words with us this evening? Thank you for being here. Oh, no problem. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, sir. Oh, well, I just wanted to say thank you for all the kind words. It feels good being appreciated for all my hard work. Being acknowledged, it, it means a lot, it truly does. Well, thank you. Thank you for everything you do for the town of Florence, and we appreciate you. So just let Ms. Garcia know where you would like that $75 to, and we look forward to continuing to have you at the town of Florence. Thank you. Thank you. All right, our next item is the presentation regarding the Florence CERT participation at Country Thunder. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to Chief Walter. <clears throat> Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of council, um, I'm proud to be here tonight to talk about the CERT team. And I know that we probably have some time constraints because otherwise I could go into a very long discussion as to what they do. Uh, but tonight I just wanted to focus on uh, one event that they participated in, the Country Thunder event. As most people think about the event, you think about the things in town with traffic or lots of people, different shows that are going on. Um, but the CERT team at Country Thunder plays a vital, vital role in transporting Americans with disabilities or ADA patrons. Due to the layout of the event and physical obstacles on site, it is imperative that a service like this is available. Our team manned ADA golf carts and picked people up at their vehicles. They drove them to the designated spots close to or within the event area so they could also enjoy the shows. Following the concerts, the team picked those patrons up and returned them to their vehicles. In all, the team transported 353 ADA pa patrons throughout the weekend. They also assisted um, the staff to help better mark the handicapped area so that those patrons could find it easier so that they could be transported. Not only did they do that, but with the large crowds that are down there and um, the outdoor event and some uh, medical things that can happen, um, the team is also trained and assisted AMR at the medical tent to help uh, get information from patients and assist with first aid so the medics could attend to the more critical patients. Um, so I just wanted to share that with everyone because 
They're they're kind of the unsung heroes down there with what they do, and uh, a couple of them are here tonight. But I just wanted to um, show them our appreciation for for what they do, not only for our town, um, but also for that event. So thank you. I want to say thank you to all of the CERT members that are here in the audience. We really appreciate you, the job that you provide in our community, and everything that you do from the training to just really giving your time, your experience, your knowledge, your, your willingness to give back always to the community. It means a lot, and I want to say thank you. Council? All right. You guys want to come up? We'll take a quick picture with our CERT team. All right. One more trip, if you guys don't mind coming on up. We just want to really appreciate you guys. We'll take a quick picture. and. I'm sorry, John. All right, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Moving on to item seven, which is our consent agenda this evening. All consent items, all items on the consent agenda will be handled by a single vote as part of the consent agenda. Unless a council member or member of the public objects at the time the agenda item is called. Item A, insurance services, ISO rating results. B, Proclamation May 1st through 7th, 2022, as the 53rd Annual Professional Municipal Clerks Week. Item C, authorization to enter into professional services agreement with Waterworks Engineering to provide the design of construction documents and engineering plans for CIP SU 92 Main Street, WW Main Replacement, Main Street Sewer between Butte Avenue and School Bus Drive in an amount not to exceed $72,550. Ladies and gentlemen, that is your consent agenda. Is there any item that you would like removed at this time? All right, seeing no such movement, 
We need a motion. I make a motion we approve the consent agenda as read. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second motion to approve the consent agenda as read. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. And that motion carries. Item eight, new business. A, repeal of COVID-19 emergency declaration. At this time, I will turn it over to Ms. Elisa Garcia. Mayor, members of council? Mm. Can't hear you. Where's our team? Mm. Do you want the handheld? You probably muted me on your new new boy. No. Mayor, members of council, as you are aware, on March 30th, 2022, Governor Doug Ducey did end the coronavirus pandemic related emergency. So at this time, council will adopt a proclamation terminating the proclamation, after, with, after which we would ask for a resolution that would also adopt um, a resolution, adoption of resolution 1825, this resolution would also terminate the emergency proclamation by the, by the mayor and council. So all of our items would be terminated except for those that had sunset rules within the um, policies. And so those also would terminate on June 30th, 2022, automatically. So we're, we're very happy that we're able to put forward this and we're hopeful we will continue to watch the health concerns that are related and we will continue to ask our employees, if you're sick, stay home. We want everybody at the workplace to be healthy and we wanna make sure that we are doing the best we can for our employees, but we do um, are happy to end the emergency and, and open our businesses permanently. So thank you. Thank you very much. Council, do you have any questions or comments regarding these items? No. With that, we need a motion. I make a motion we repeal the COVID-19 emergency declaration as uh, stated in agenda item 8A. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. And that motion carries. Item B. Discussion, approval, disapproval of a professional services agreement with EPS Group Incorporated to provide design services for CIPT 107 Attaway Road and Hunt Highway widening project using the State of Arizona Cooperative Contract number CTR 058874 in an amount not to exceed $219,908.75. Mr. Chris Ellis. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of council. Um, this is a much needed improvement for the entire region and not just necessarily for Florence, but there's a lot of regional traffic, a lot of truck traffic in this area. The town is still working on acquiring the right of way for the interim project, and we are already <coughs> going to be needing to widen this intersection in the very near future. This project, um, evaluates from a design concept reported DCR alternatives. So that would be um, an alignment to the south of the energy dissipator at the magma flood control wash. This could look at moving that energy dissipator, which is not very realistic. The di district is not interested in moving that. Um, but it would also look at when that roadway, the Hunt highway would be realign back onto its current alignment. It'll evaluate all the right-of-way needs for this project. But the, the idea today would be to widen from Hunt Highway around the curve to the Anthem improvements, and then approximately 1,000 feet east of Attaway, as well as Attaway Road. Um, the town recently met with Pinal County their staff, their county manager, to discuss some of these priority projects. And um, I believe we have good news to report back that they're very much interested in working with us, coordinating, um, possibly uh, making some of these projects, instead of being two projects or three projects, a project that is 
um, shared between the town and the county, which is common in Maricopa County. Um, EPS has unique experience in doing these types of um, design concept reports. They obviously did the very large one for Maricopa Castle Grand Highway overpass at the railroad tracks. They also did a major investment study at um, White and Parker. So with that, I, can I answer any questions about this project or the design contract or anything else? I'm really happy to see this on our agenda and moving forward. I just want to make that comment. Council Member Anderson, go ahead. Yeah, uh, two questions, Chris. Uh, what's the time frame of this, and who's going to be the project manager if we do this with multi or, or organization? Who's who's going to be wearing the? So I'm sorry. Um, first thing from the design concept report all the way to finish plans, it'll approximately be one year. It's expected to get done in May of 2023. There's a lot of public outreach. So we have one property owned by Mr. Kevin Peterson. We have another property owned by the Barclay Group. We have another property owned by the Felixes, that farmland. So there's a lot of coordination that is gonna to need to be occurred in there to figure out the proper alignment. So that's one year out. And are you, when you're asking the project manager, are you asking from the consultant side or from the town side? Well, from the town side, you said that there, there, there were going to be different organizations involved, Pinell County. Oh, I apologize. Um, we, well, so on this project, this is 100% the town's project okay. as of today. And there's a, a good chance that I will continue to be the project manager of this project for the town. Um, I think we have a good split between Mr. Ron Gritman and myself, and we'll probably continue this. Um, as it relates to this, I, I apologize for not probably being a little bit more clear. The town is working with the county and probably going to be pulling in Coolidge for the, the entire Attaway cross section. So similar to what I've discussed previously on Highway North of Franklin, there are thresholds that generally are established to determine when roads need to be widened. So today, Attaway is, well, I shouldn't say today, a few months back, it was at 11,400 vehicles a day. So it won't be that far off that we'll be looking at 13, 14,000 cars a day. And I just want Pinal County to understand, like we want this whole corridor. It doesn't make sense for the town to build Attaway four lanes until Palmer and then it drops down. Obviously, the complexity of this is the funding of that bridge by Pinal County. But um, I do believe that the staff has opened that door to have future meetings and to discuss this and so that their staff understands the town of Florence staff and council's priorities on some of these projects. And for myself, I just want to understand what the plan is. That's what I want to understand. I don't even, I'm not asking you to give me necessarily an exact date because that depends on growth, but I want to understand what the plan is. If there's, if there is this idea that development is going to pay for it, I need to understand that. And then if it's going to be a joint project, I want to understand that. I just, I just want to understand the plan. I want to know that there is a plan. So we did review the Pinal County it's just referred to generally as a TIP, but I think it's a transportation improvement program. I'm sorry, a five-year transportation improvement program. And the town did provide comments already, um, but it is available for public consumption. So the public should read this, review this, and, and make comments as well. Um, I would believe that, Lisa, we can send this out to the council as well. So we'll send it out as well. And we can provide some of the comments that staff has already done. So maybe it makes it a little bit easier for you to um, look at this. But for example, um, I think it's phase five of Hunt Highway, which stops sh well short of the town limits, but ends up at Oasis. And I always mix this up. Boulevard, I believe, is the northern one. And the other one is Way, I think. But either way, they call them both Oasis. I'm like right next to each other. Mm -hmm. So their phase they're just acquiring right away through, as of today, um, 
2028 for that phase five. And I mistakenly thought because of the project is called widening of Hunt Highway that it was a widening project, but the funding didn't match. So it was, it was educational for me and, and town manager Garcia to understand where their thought processes is. And um, but we, like I said, we just look forward to having future meetings on this. Thank you. Council member. I was just going to add that I think it's important that we have a stake in that game and I and encourage our um, constituents to also be, like you said, involved in that process. I think it's important that we take the lead and not just understanding what they want, but pushing to the county our needs. I think that there's a lack of communication there where we clearly see in day-to-day -day driving the congestion that Attaway causes. Um, I drive it every day and it's it's a mess. I see the car lines that wait for, like we've, we've all stated, you know, over an hour sitting on a stoplight. And I think it's important that everybody understands um, really the true impact, not just, like I said, not just for us, but for the entire region on that one intersection alone. Um, so I think that it's important that we take the lead on that and not just understand what they're doing, but push for what's needed. Um, so for the, the, the people in the audience or at home who've seen me speak in front of ADWR or ADOT or what have you, um, this town pays me to advocate for the town, not to make friends. <laughs> so um, we will continue to advocate with the directionality of what's best for the town. And sometimes that's, you know, it's a, a friend of mine from a different community. Yeah, always would be the one who would always kind of look at it from the underdog. And I appreciated that from his perspective. But my job was always to, you know, again, ride for the brand. So... On our end, we will continue to do that. And when needed, we will obviously involve and update the council members. And hopefully, you guys can feel part of this process. All right. I'll make, I'll make my statement pretty brief because we're um, on a time restriction. But I'm on the East Valley Transportation Committee. And I will tell you that Florence is typically not part of the conversation. Um, I think one time we've been a part of the conversation and only because they asked me what I was looking for. And so I explained to them I needed us to be a more valuable piece of the table and conversation because traffic is an issue for us and we are a thorough way for people to get through us to other places. Um, so I encourage us to do that. But I think we need to also get the county to understand that it's better to be in front of it then behind it or in the middle of growth. Because if you wait five years, you are technically 10 years behind. You are not five years behind because it'll take you five years to get to the project and then five years to do the full project. So if we can get the county to understand that we as a town and as a county need to start stepping ahead so that we can be on track with all the other uh, counties in the state. Thank you. All right. Seeing no further comments, we need a motion on this item. I make a motion to enter into a professional service agreement with the EPS Group Incorporated to provide design services for the CIP T107 Attaway Road and Hunt Highway Widening Project. Use of the State of Arizona Cooperative Contract Number CTR058874 in the amount not to exceed $219,908.75. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Item C is discussion, approval, disapproval, to enter into a services agreement with Bill Foster for the 2022 Junior Prado Rodeo in the amount of $5,000. At this time, I will call up Miss Allison Fleas. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor, Council. Um, on March 8th, staff issued a request for proposals uh, for a professional firm to organize, facilitate, and operate the 90th Annual Junior Parada Rodeo. Uh, we received one bid for that request, and that was from the Historic Florence Foundation. Um, I would like to note that it should be the Historic Florence Foundation, not Bill Foster, on um, when 
when making that motion. Um, and that would be for $5,000. Um, I'm if there's any questions, I'd like to answer them at this time. I do have two questions. Um, first is where do we ad where do we advertise? Because I've heard from some citizens where they're like, "Hey, you put out these RFPs, you put out these advertisements. Where do you put them out? Because I haven't seen them." This was on um, in the Florence Reminder and Blade, and it ran for three weeks from March. I want to say from March uh, 17th through the 31st, and as well as our website. OK. We may also, just in the future, want to utilize social media because the Florence Reminder, as we know, only goes out once a week. And then on our website, unless you're looking, you don't really know. Okay. Now, I did go through, and in reading the, um, the packet and the submittal, I noticed that they quoted $30,000. Are they willing to do the project for $5,000? There was a misunderstanding on that. That is the total budget for them to produce the rodeo. They, they understood that the budget was $5,000 for that. All right. I know just with right now, uh, you know, the way that we're looking and hopefully we can get some things, you know, in line, but that's all code speak right now. OK, any other questions from council? I do want to say we are appreciative, Mr. Foster, and if you want to come on up to the podium. So Mr. Foster and his foundation ran the rodeo last 89th annual Junior Prada Rodeo, which is the longest standing rodeo for our youth. It went off very successfully. You submitted reports to council. You made amazing partnerships, and hopefully this time you'll have much more advanced time to get those partnerships lined up. Yeah, that was very much needed. Madam Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council, thank you for um, allowing me the opportunity again to, to host this um, historic event here in the town of Florence. Um, being the 90th, and having a little bit more time, yes, we plan on making this, you know, a, a big celebration this year. Um, and as well as preserving the history of Florence, I think this rodeo does bring a lot of that history to this town. And we have a lot to show for it. So um, we will be seeking sponsors. Uh, yes, our budget is $30,000. <clears throat> and with prices of everything, it's probably going to go higher before before we get to that point. So uh, we will be seeking sponsors for this. And um, I would say if you'd like to sponsor our 90th annual, it would be much appreciated. So thank you. Thank you. Any questions? I had one, and okay. it's acknowledge of addenda number one. What does that mean? Maybe Allie. Sorry, I should have asked beforehand. So what I was taught, you guys know what I'm talking about, correct, Lisa? Okay. 
I just didn't know what it was because I couldn't find it in the packet. And I noticed that when it said acknowledgement and it said no, I wanted to make sure that everybody was on the same page of what it was because I didn't know what it was. Okay, so we, we, when we receive questions um, regarding the solicitation, uh, one of the questions that came in um, was if an, uh, somebody from out of state or out of the country can produce this event. And so we issued, issued an okay. addendum to answer that question. Thank you. I genuinely couldn't find that anywhere, so I apologize. I just wanted to make sure that if it was something that you needed information on, that we made sure that we gave you that information. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. All right. If there's no other questions or comments, we need a motion. There you go. I make a motion as stated. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. And that motion carries. Congratulations and thank you again. I did see the advertisement and the artwork. It looks nice. You're already doing a great job of pre-planning. Item nine is our legislative report. Do you have anything this evening, Mr. Graves? I do. You want the short, short version? Well, we've been reading all of the emails and updates, but it's always nice to give our citizens the same. So yes, please. Absolutely. Um, just wanted to touch on the uh, the budget in addition to what I submitted uh, for my department report. Uh, this month, uh, regarding the budget, there's been very little progress made over the last month. They've been fo focusing their efforts on the budget, um, but they haven't really made much headway. So um, leadership in the House and the Senate are meeting today and throughout the week to establish their top priorities and try to come up with a consolidated plan moving forward. So we'll see what comes from those efforts. Um, the, the one major item that may that may throw a wrench into things is um, the the governor did request the creation of a new um, Arizona Water Authority. Uh, he's asking for one billion dollars for those uh, for that um, fund. That fund would f um, would fund uh, projects and grants throughout the state to help. Um, with water supply projects and conservation projects. And so if the legislature is not on board with that item, it could be a deal breaker for the governor. So we'll see what happens with that moving forward. Uh, with that, I'm happy to take any questions on uh, my report or uh, the update on the budget, state budget this evening. All right, thank you so much. Any questions for Jeff? Moving on to item 10, our manager's report. Mayor and council. Very briefly, I just wanted to mention that on Monday, um, May 9th at 6 o'clock, we will be doing a budget and CIP workshop. On um, June 13th, we will be doing our code enforcement work session. And also to let you know that May 4th at 5 o'clock is the last day to submit an argument, either for or against the permanent base adjustment. Um, I do want to let the public know that anyone who submits is required to submit the $200 per ordinance. So it doesn't matter whether you're pro, doesn't matter whether you're con, it is the same $200 that is required. And that is to offset the cost of translating to Spanish as well as printing. Um, and lastly, Mr. Salas already mentioned it, but um, Chris and I did meet with the county uh, manager, Leo Liu, and his team to discuss future planning efforts, CIP projects, and how we can make sure that we provide seamless service to both the um, residents of Pinal County as well as the town of Florence. And we look forward to continue to have discussions with them. Thank you. Department reports. Does anybody have any questions? Call to the public. This is our second call to the public this evening. If anybody wishes to speak. You, you do have one hand up, and that is Miss Sherry Har. Okay. I just noticed that, but I was first going into the audience. And Miss Har, go ahead. Hello. Sorry about that. I just had to unmute myself. Um, good afternoon, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Council. I was reading the Florence Independent. And I was reading the stats that we received on our survey. I was kind of sad to see that the town staff had 79%, town council 64%, and town manager's office 58%. But I did see, um, Ms. Mayor, where you indicated that you're going to be using the survey as a tool and set up goals, policies, and focus areas moving forward. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing those results. 
Secondly, uh, my question is to Mr. Eaton. When you signed or received the proclamation, you indicated something about ICC. Not sure what those acronyms stand for. And also, Ms. Garcia, you in indicated acronym CIP. So maybe for people that aren't doing this day to day, instead of you guys using acronyms, you could be more specific and let us know what those acronyms mean. Thank you very much. Excellent feedback. Thank you so much. ICC is International Code Compliance and CI. Go ahead. I'm sorry, yes. It was Inter International Code Council. Okay, and the CIP is the Capital Improvement Project. Capital Improvement, yeah. So, appreciate that feedback. Call to the council for the second round. Council Member Mendoza. I got to go, I had the opportunity to go with uh, Mr. Jeff Graves down to the Nicola launch. Um, very exciting. The governor was there. Uh, we got to see some of their products that they're building out there. Uh, looks very promising and uh, looks like they're in the process of bringing more jobs to the area. So yay for them. Council Member Hughes. I Council Member Rodriguez. Council Member Neal. I have nothing. Council Member Anderson. I have nothing. Vice Mayor Cordos. I have nothing. Okay. All right. I just want to say thank you to everybody for being here this evening. Um, thank you for stepping forward again in regards to the rodeo, and we appreciate that partnership. As Ms. Garcia mentioned, we do have our expenditure limitation coming up so if anybody has any questions please reach out so that way we can help give you any information that you may need thank you so much with that we are going into executive session um, this evening for the purpose of interviewing um, two of the five candidates for our town manager position with that we need a motion I make a motion we adjourn to executive session second, second. second. motion and a second all in favor Aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. And that motion carries. We are adjourned.